an investor, um, you know, you either need to be a sovereign wealth fund or someone who has a, a very, very active um, staff, because I think it's been mentioned earlier, you, you, you need to be local. I mean, you need to find some way to get local. So I really think for, for the majority of the, you know, non-Russian investors, it's to go with a, with a fund or with a manager. It, it could be through, you know, there's a few public companies, obviously, once represented here. But I think if you're trying to make a real estate investment, it, it, it's probably through a fund. The thing that I maybe just tag on to what John was saying is that, you know, our experience has been, even though there's more interest today, uh, I would say, in, in the last three or four or five months from uh, non-European investors in, I'm going to say, the broad European opportunity uh, from a real estate perspective coming from U.S. Uh, and from Asia, uh, you really have two camps on Russia. It's, it's just, we, we were raising a, a, a fund um, in 2008, and uh, we wanted to have a small allocation to Russia to do a little bit of what John was talking about, where it's like, it's a meaningful exposure, but it's kind of dipping your toe in the water. And there were people that either said they like that, or they, <coughs> if it has, you know, one, you know, dollar going to Russia, I can't do it. And we lost two fairly large uh, institutional investors that were even doing due diligence on it just said it just won't go past our investment committee. So some of that still exists. Um, that's digressing from your question, but I, but I think that, you know, again, it depends on the size of the investor, but for most, even large pension funds, I think it's through, through some type of, uh, you know, commingled fund.